Hey y'all, what's up? My name is Brett Park, and in today's video, we have something really fun and fresh happening. Today, I'm gonna be comparing my art portfolio from high school that was rejected everywhere, everywhere I applied to. And we're also gonna be talking about my portfolio after art school now. I'm not actually done with art school yet, but I finished all my studio classes, so I'm just saying this is my like, finished portfolio basically. I'm obviously gonna make more work in the next year, but we'll see how that progresses. However, not the point of this video. We are doing a little battle, a knockout, from each piece in order of each portfolio, seeing if I improved over the last three years. Newsflash, I think I improved, but that's for y'all to decide. So without further ado, let's get into the video. I saw a little bit of this. Look how much watermelon I have. Mmm, scrum diddly umptious. Now to give y'all a little context, I applied with my high school portfolio that I humiliating, humili humiliatingly posted on YouTube that was rejected from RISD, UChicago, and Brown. Why did I think this art portfolio could get into those places? I don't know. To be honest, I did a couple art classes in high school, never took like an AP art or whatnot, and I was never gonna apply to art school. I ended up applying to 17 schools in total, but it was actually my parents who wanted me to apply to art school and just shoot out a portfolio, see what happens. We know what happened by now. Um, nothing. Nothing happened, actually. But after I committed to USC for communications, I ended up transferring into the art school by adding it as a major. So now I'm both a BA in communications and a BA in art. And after finishing the BA program, almost, almost there. I have made this portfolio. Y'all tired of me talking, blabbering on, but I think the context is very important. So without further ado, let's get actually, actually into the video. I have my little laptop here. So we're starting off with the first piece in the rejected portfolio titled Mirror Mirror, which is acrylic on canvas, 18 by 24 inches. Uh, um, I'm not obsessed with this at all. It looks very unfinished. I think the color scheme maybe is a bit more funky and different. However, I would never really play with these colors like this now. I think it makes sense. Cooler tones in the back warmer tones in the front, but other than that, I'm not impressed that all the proportions is giving cartoon character, is giving illustration. The only thing that kind of slid in this one are the lips. The lips are kind of nice. They're kind of goofy, but other than that, the hands are completely unfinished and not unfinished in like a good way, unfinished in a very bad way. It's like you need another like three, four painting sessions in this. Very basic, very tropey. And my thing is, you can talk about a very like basic, popular topic like beauty standards and social media, but there's a way to do it that's in less conventional ways. This is very conventional, kind of bored, not gonna lie. Now the first piece in the other portfolio, funny enough, also talks about social media. It's titled Fetish For Me, and it is seven by six feet with oil on unstretched canvas. Just comparing these two side by side, like night and day the rendering is just so finished in the second one. It's just very pronounced, it's smooth, it's detailed. My favorite part is actually the thigh and the calf and the foot in the foreground. But I think my understanding of color also comes through in this piece. I have the cool flash from the camera on my face and I have these warmer tones in the background. And for the writing portion, I said, drawn upon my experience as a chronically online individual who posts multiple times a day on various social channels, I grapple with my ironic and perhaps paradoxical relationship with self fetishization This piece combines the modern day selfie with a renaissance inspired nude recline to depict how interactions with the spectator through technological mediums subjects me to further objectification catalyzed by my online presence. I also find that there's an in-between space for if I'm objectifying myself or if I'm putting myself in a position to be objectified. This is why I place the expressionless figure taking a selfie in front of a banal nude of myself while preventing the viewer from seeing the most sexually charged parts of my body. And obviously the writing is so, it's just better. It's just better now. My writing has improved so much since then, so I'm happy about that. Moving on, we have Look At Her versus She's Touch. Okay, work. For Look At Her, it is an acrylic on canvas, again, 18 by 24 inches. I said that this self-portrait reflects my experiences growing up with anxiety. Da 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 da. There's a little hand on my chinny chin chin, and that one hand is turning into like a million hands in my brain skull. Interestingly enough, I am playing again with a more expressionless face that still evokes some mood with like the eyebrows, but the eyebrows are giving like 2016 James Charles. So it's not like the best. It's not the best. I'm, the eyebrows are a lot. Do I think it's executed well? No, 
babes that look unfinished. The hands on the top look very unfinished. The colors on the face I'm so confused by is giving rainbow. But I was trying to experiment with adding more colors into the skin tone rather than just these deeper hues or lighter hues from the same kind of, for my skin tone, peachy or like orangey base. Um, I also think that the handling of the hand on the chin is not rendered well either. Its form is very flat. Yeah, that, that's my take on this little painting. But again, I'm gonna rip it to shreds either way because technique wise, it is night and day with cheese touch. Cheese touch, I'm experimenting with a more monochrome palette and the content actually relates to how I handled the paint. For this, it is a, another oil on unstretched canvas and it's six by seven feet tall. I write, referencing Diary of a Wimpy Kid's iconic scene where molded cheese on the playground's asphalt caused mass hysteria amongst children who were afraid to get the cheese touch. I, as a non-heteronormative Asian American, deeply resonate with the cheese. In today's society, the Asian body is deemed undesirable or fetishized due to our exoticism. Because the handling of the paint is very blended out, there's not many imperfections in it which flatten the actual body even though there's some contouring and shading going on and that flatness heavily relates to the flatness of cheese. You'll see later on in the portfolio that the holes in my body that relate to cheese holes are also referenced again later on in the portfolio with these different prints on my body of nude silhouettes. And for me, these hands are very stylized and I've been able to stylize them in a more intentional way because I've tried to study realism a bit more and understanding anatomy of my own body but hands in general. And also, this resembles, like if you were to look at the back of my body, it kind of looks similar. The resemblance and the likeness in the first painting, it's not giving me. Not quite, but you know, we do have like the basically baldness going on. Huh. Number three, time for number three. This is called Remember Me. It is acrylic on canvas, 12 by 16 inches. And it's just a little painting of a wooden Paul Revere bear. I think the values in this piece are a lot more striking than the range of values in the previous pieces. However, um, the proportions to the actual bear are very off in real life, so to me, it looks off here. But honestly, I'm not mad at all about the fur underneath the garment that the bear is wearing. I think there's a lot of rainbow, good texture going on, and I'm not mad about that part. However, babes, the face is giving transparent, okay? And not in transparent in like a good way, where the underpainting is seeping through, but I'm confused by it, but also the more I look at it, the more I'm not confused by it. Because it's about remembering, memory is very temporal, ephemeral, and so having these underpainting moments peek through actually makes sense to me content-wise. Also, I would never today have my signature, let alone my signature written in this font on the painting in the portfolio. I should have just like photoshopped that shit out. And comparing it to this painting from 2022, oil on unstretched canvas again, and it is five by six feet tall. And I have this allegorical imagery and motif that reveals the complex emotions I have when rejecting my Korean culture entirely to self-express outside of its limiting boundaries. So it's a much more emotional, hard-hitting piece. Again, a self-portrait. The third pieces in both of these portfolios have animals. And I do not do animals often, so that's kind of a funny little tidbit. I think the shoulder works. The shoulder's good, but I wish the face was a bit larger. It looks a bit small compared to the body. I also think the tiger is a bit too illustrative for my liking. I wish it was a bit more realistic. However, I don't want it to be hyper-realistic since this is about allegory and mythology and a surreal imaginative space, babe. So it doesn't have to be realistic. Yeah, I, if I were to redo it, I would redo it. Also, the blood is not giving blood. It's giving like slime. One of the slime girlies um, doing ASMR. Yeah, no, it, it's too clumped together and it should have like spread out more watery-ish. I don't know, I don't know. The next painting is Mute versus If Only You Looked At Me With Virgin Eyes. For Mute, it was acrylic and spray paint on canvas and it was 36 by 24 feet. I remember doing this painting very close to the portfolio deadline. So it is a bit more developed in terms of how I treat the figure, how I handle concepts, entering mixed media, which I think was good for me to try to push myself to do something different. However, the imagery is just getting lost and kind of combat each other for attention. I don't know where my eye necessarily goes. Um, I have the handprints, which are kind of confusing in the American flag imagery in the back, very on the nose. And I wish I was a bit more covert with it, but um, I think it's a step up from the other portraits I did. I feel like this makes more sense to me as like rendering wise, it looks more finished. And I'm comparing it with this piece, which is the earliest work that I put in the portfolio, which is from 2021. 
And I wanted to put this earlier work in this portfolio because it shows how I developed understanding silhouettes and how it interacts with um, what I'm doing today in my own practice. And I'm happy with how all my ideas have developed over time. So that's the real kind of like awesomeness great word choice awesomeness of art school is that you really get to develop your concepts even more moving on to number five an observational study versus psychological penetration um yikes yikes oh my god this first of all i remember this not being an observational study I, it literally started as a sketch from an observational study but i honestly just used like a photo at the very end to add in details what details you may ask i have no idea the cloth on the bottom looks like shit it looks like shit okay it does not look like cloth the only part that's kind of cool is the baseball in the foreground but honestly the baseball isn't giving as much as it needs to give the fine lines could be sharpened up a bit more and I'm confused by the forms of the bottles too. They look like they're slanted. They look like they are not in the right perspective. I have no clue. I mean, it's not like horrific and god awful. However, other people that put in observational studies that were charcoal in high school were doing leaps and bounds better than this. So I don't have much to say. Interestingly enough though, the only other white and black piece I have in my now portfolio is in slide 5 too, which is kind of funny and fresh. It's called Psychological Penetration and it's made of ceramic clay. I just did this piece. It is four feet wide by four feet tall by, it's, it's about six and a half feet tall and it's all ceramics. And I said that, so in making this tiger a more characterized version of itself, I'm flattening its being and sexualizing it in the same ways that these masculine ideals reduce non-heteronormative people to their identities, which do not align with that heteronormative expectation. So it is like a power play reversal, yet I'm not completely reversing it because again, this is a very tall sculpture, if not like statue, and it towers over most people because I don't think most people are six and a half feet tall. Its scale lends to its power that it still has even when it is flattened and the mark makings I have in the sculpture from my actual hand. For this young piece, you can see the hands and the mark making I did while bending the clay to my desires. And so I feel like that in itself was a battle and you can see evidence of that damn battle. So it's still like this tug, push and pull of the stereotypes and me trying to have power over the thing that was oppressive towards me. I think it's the start of something I can make as a series, but we shall see in the future. Next piece, crying faucet and conjuring a crow. Oh my god. Sorry, I just got a sneak peek of what I wrote in the additional details and I'm shook. Um, so for crying faucet, it is scratch board 9 by 12 inches. I mean, there's some things maybe off perspective wise, but I like it. I don't think I could do much better now, to be honest. Like, I'm not even sure how Scratchboard even works. I'm not really sure. It was so traumatizing to do this piece that I literally never touched Scratchboard in my life ever again. And for the additional details, I said, during anxious times and saddened emotions, I would often retreat to my shower to sit, think, and reflect. It was my safe space. Most of the time, I would stare at the dripping faucet in front of me with empathetic eyes, recognizing that we are more similar than different in that moment. Girl, um, why the last part Loki eat though? Mm, like, I was thinking more about like how I relate to different objects that are inanimate, and I'm starting to do that even now in my practice today. So it's kind of funny looking back at how I started to do that with this crying faucet. And it's true, I would sit in the bathroom all the damn time and just cry. But very melodramatic for additional details. I would never input my emotions like that into an additional details now, unless it was like a written poem that went along with the piece or story that went with the piece. This one, Conjuring a Crow, it is wire thread, ceramic, and wood. Um, I say that despite Korean mythologies being at the center of Korean culture and grounding them during times of imperialism, the practice of shamanism is degraded in modern day. Do I have poor eyesight or is this not focused? I have no clue. We're gonna continue on. Okay. 
I, I imagine the wire and thread of this work to be a drawing rather than sculptural, as these symbolically one-dimensional lines build its form to parallel how fictitious human-spun stories have real-world impacts that can take space in the physical realm. When I was really debating on putting it in my portfolio anyways, I'm not obsessed with it at all. Its presence in an actual gallery space that it was displayed in, it had a lot of presence. It really did, but in images, it just does not do it justice. And so I'm not proud of it as an image, but I'm proud of it as like an actual sculptural work. I just wish I had better documentary photos of it. A bit more of a different thing in my portfolio that doesn't fit along the themes of self-expression, but it is what it is. Maybe, maybe Crying Fawcett wins, who knows? I have no idea. Moving on. This is where the portfolio gets getting really bad, okay? This sculptural work is called Shoot My Head. Okay. It's polymer clay and an apple, and it's five by five by five inches. I said, my art teacher's assignment was to create a sculpture in one hour. I chose to use both polymer clay and the apple in my backpack as materials. This sculpture is a different take on the classic shooting an apple off of someone's head, as the head is now on the apple. It was supposed to be funny. It's supposed to be kind of goofy and fun. It just looks like a joke of a piece. The face could be fun if it was like actual claymation, like if I tried to do more polymer stuff in my portfolio where it was a stop motion. Yeah, and I don't know why I put it on bed sheets to have a documentary photo. It should have just been in like a white background to highlight the actual piece itself. The ripped pillowcase in the back is not giving anything towards the content. So again, not sure why it's there. For this piece, a sculptural work hiding in my humbuk, and this is cardboard and twine, and it's about 12 and a half feet tall in terms of installation. If you're bored of this piece, so am I, because dead ass, I made this literally over two years ago, and it's about time I move on from it. And I'm combining Western and Eastern symbols of the Korean hanbok with the iconic Western puffer jacket to show how I made up and constructed these very flat caricatures of masculinity to front as my actual being, so that people would perceive me to be in the heteronormative spectrum when that was not the case. If anyone ever does talk about my work, a lot of times this piece gets brought up and I don't even know y'all. I feel like, is it kitschy to use cardboard as a material? Like I have no clue. Um, but yeah, moving on. This is a figure study, graphite on paper versus a figure of me standing in a corner with my butt out, with my butt cheeks hanging out. Um, so first of all, the figure study. Let's address this, okay? It's giving like apology video that I need to make. I would like to apologize to the figure drawing community for committing such a devious act by depicting human bodies and flesh the way I did in this paper drawing because it was not it. Yeah, I really don't know what to say for these. I was under the impression that you had to have figure drawings in your portfolio and that's not the case. Do I think it's absolutely horrendous, disgusting, and appalling? Maybe, possibly not, but it's really not good. There's no character or weight to the lines, no differentiation in line weight. Values, shading is off, it's very static, you don't feel the weight of the flesh, you just see it as like a cartoon illustration, and even that, it's not good. So, moving very much on from that piece, with this other figurative work, I say, for this one, there's actual content, I say, Symbolizing the sexual repression and social isolation non heteronormative people experience, this photograph visually communicates such themes as I subject myself to standing in a corner outside my apartment naked. Um, I consider this work in the context of Skip Arnold, Jennifer Locke, and more abstractly Bruce Nauman, who are also figurative artists or figurative performance artists. Um, and just thinking about how they treat the figure in their own works, which is just absolutely beautiful. I would highly recommend you check out all three of their works. But I love this piece because there's an innocence to standing in a corner where you have like your parents being like, you're annoying as fuck, go, to the, go over there, stand in the corner. Um, and so I took that and had that more like childish punishment as an adult now. And again, these markings are my body of naked men and stereotypes of queer people just projected onto me. So that's that. Kind of violent. Yeah, I don't know. I really want to do a series of this. And you'll see I have a bunch more photos in this portfolio along with a performance piece. So you might get bored of seeing my butt tickle, but you're going to see it. The next piece, sketchbook pages. God awful, disgusting, disturbing. I don't like this at all. Mainly for the documentation. The sketchbook page on the top is overexposed in the right-hand corner and I don't like it. In fact, these sketches themselves are very 
underwhelming to say the least. Even the sketches on the bottom, like the little portraits, not good, not good at all. And they aren't edited well. Like the lighting is so bad that I took the photos of each sketchbook in. I don't know why I collaged them in this way. Very, very confused. Another little photograph moment that treats my body as more of a sculptural object rather than something that is being flattened against a wall. I say that I'm exploring the contradictory nature in which I try to find salvation from the violent stereotypes that I experience by going back to using the spirituality and religion and tradition that oppress me. I don't know, it's kind of like a, like a little in-between space. This watercolor portrait not it. The only thing that I kind of like in this is the delicacy of the hand. Love the shadows in the hands, low key. I think the color in the shadows and the folds of the shirt, which don't make sense, I think they're interesting. I try to put some blue hue, some greenish stuff in the shirt, which makes it more interesting to look at. But overall, the proportions, god awful. I'm not sure why they're there. Yeah, I'm just not obsessed. I'm not obsessed, and I would never do watercolor again because I do not like watercolor anymore. I also have this piece titled Siloed, where I'm up against a wall. Again, the flattening of my character, and I'm talk and I have no agency to look back at the spectator that is putting me up against this wall for their own desire, fetishizations, imagination. Um, another watercolor on paper is an observational study of a farm, and it's supposed to be a technical piece. In terms of technique, the values need to be kicked up way more. It needs to have a better range of values. Not only that, but the gesture lines I'm making to indicate leafs aren't leafing. And the composition, I'm bored. I'm bored. So my camera just died again. And I cannot recharge it, so this is what we're working with. Moving on, this piece is titled Propped. And it is again, line of cut on, line of cut print on skin. And I say that this piece references Jenny Saville's 1992 painting titled Prop, when I depict myself as an Asian body on a stand for the white male spectator to fetishize and take in. And if you don't know Prop by Jenny Saville, so absolutely stunning. The scale is absolutely mad. And I was just so inspired by how she depicted flesh on this stand and how it had a lot of weight. The stand in itself was very pervasive and violent towards the figure by not only putting them on a pedestal to be looked at, but also like, you know, a little summon summon. And so I try to find on Facebook Marketplace a similar like stand and this ended up being like the base of a table that I just bought for 40 bucks. This next one, it makes me so sad, honestly. It's called Conformity, and it makes me sad because I wish I did webcomics still. I ran this webcomic account called Dumb Paint back in the day, and this is one of the webcomics I posted on there. I think the only reason why I put it in here, because it's so simple and basically doodle-like and doesn't really show technique or that much of concept either, because I talked about this webcomic character so much in my comment app essay where I felt like I had to put it in because if I make a whole essay on how this art piece helped me and my self-expression, I should probably put it in the portfolio too, right? So they have some context. It's giving doodle. I don't, I don't know. I would totally... I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. For the next piece in my other portfolio, I dabble with performance art by having this piece called Get It Off. And I say... And this is the piece itself. You can watch it. Maybe a little trigger warning is kind of intense, possibly maybe. But here it is. I say that this work is to be placed in conversation with... I say that this work is supposed to be in relation with Zhang Huan's family tree, not only because of my personal age in this and the inking on my body, but also because it represents how my cultural background subsumes my sexual and gender identity as well. Yeah, and that's just the performance piece. Um, that was it for that portfolio, so I'm just gonna continue on to the other portfolio. This piece is titled Somber, acrylic on paper, 7 by 9 inches, and it's made with acrylic, and it's made with like a little palette knife moment. 
I personally think that this is not bad. I like how expressive the mark making is. However, I don't think this is a standalone piece. I feel like this should be in a series of like 20 other portraits I do with the palette knife showing off this technique because it's nowhere else to be seen in my other parts of the portfolio. The depiction of flesh as these red violet mark makings at the back, the cooler hair. Next is, oh, oh my God, this is bad. This is called walking my octopus as in like walking, like a walk. Um, it's pastel on paper, 16 inches by 22 inches. This reflects the unique relationship humans have with animals. We build friendships with some, study others, and eat the rest. In this pastel, the man is holding an octopus in a bowl but has no utensils in the other hand, which shows it has no intention of eating it. This irony depicts the complex relationship aforementioned. Girl, no. I took this picture at Grand Central Market and I thought it was pretty so I drew it and added an octopus in the person's hand. The interaction I'm describing in the additional details does not even come through in the actual pastel because there's so many other points to look at. Everything is so flat in terms of value scale as well, where your eye doesn't really land right on the figure in the foreground, it kind of gets lost in the background as well. The bowl is nowhere to be seen. There should have been like a highlight on the octopus or the bowl, or like a closer up. If I was trying to talk about this interaction, but I just made up some bullshit for art school. Period. This final piece is called Series of Self and it's acrylic on paper, 9 by 11 inches. I literally need another portfolio piece and so I just started taking selfies in different expressions and collaged them together and made up a story to go behind it. Yeah, that's the tea. And honestly, I think the composition is kind of fun. I think this composition is kind of quirky, but the face rendering is different in a lot of different places. It's not very consistent, but I think it's kind of cute. Like if this was like 8 feet tall, I think we have a piece, but it's not. It's very small. So those are both portfolios all done and through with, y'all. Let me know if you think I improved. I'm not sure. I think I did personally, but you never know. <laughs> and, and if you like the video, like the video. If you have a fun comment, critique, or joke to share, comment down below. And if you like me, my art, or want to follow my journey as an artist in LA, you can subscribe. It's a fun time here. And I think that's the end of the video, y'all. That's the end of the video.